using serialization in .NET Framework is very easy. Uh, let me show you how can this be achieved. Uh, let's create a new project. This project is a console application project. Uh, we'll call this project Serialization Sample. This is a console application, so we need only uh, one file to create our sample. The first step is to create uh, our serialization data. We'll use one class called computer. Let's create a class computer. And I'm going to create uh, two files. The first file is an int file called id, a private file and then a private uh, f file called description uh, I'm gonna encapsulate the first one and the second one and now I have I have a computer class with two properties. The first property is ID and the second property is description. Uh, let's create a constructor in order to be able to create an instance of computer more easily. So I'm going to create the public computer, the, the empty one and the constructor with parameters. So. The first parameter is the ID, and second parameter is a string one called description. I'm using this constructor to uh, initialize the instance of computer. I'm gonna use my computer class to create an array, an array of computers. This array of computers will be named computers that's a new array created with a new computer using an ID and a description and the second one is a new computer it's a desktop computer let's use a binary formatter to create a serialized representation of this uh, computer's array I'm declaring the system runtime serialization formatters binary in order to be able to use the binary formatter. Uh, this binary formatter uses one uh, object tree uh, and uses a file stream to serialize data from the computer's uh, array and then. I'm declaring also the IO namespace in order to use the file stream class. I'm using the file stream class to create a file in the file system to save my computer's object state. This file stream object is called fs and it's a new file stream. I'm going to write my files path and the file mode. Now I'm going to create a binary formatted. This binary formatted will be named serializer. It's a new instance of a binary formatter. I'm gonna use the serialize method of the binary formatted instance. I specify my stream, my file stream, and the object graph. Our object graph is the array of computers. So I write the name of the array, the name is computers, and then I close the file stream. Let's create a new instance of a computer array called serialized data. I create a new file stream using the same fs reference, using the same file name that I used before, I use the file mode.open for the file access parameter. Now I fill my serialized data instance. 
of type computer array with the information that is saved in the computer.dat file using the serializer object and the method the serialize. I only need a file stream. So I use the fs file stream, but you can see that the, the serialize method returns an object, so we need to cast this method cast to a computer array. Now I class my file stream and then I can use a for each structure to read every computer saved and my serialized data object. I write for each computer PC in serialized data and inside my brackets I'm going to write a console right line sentence in order to print a message on the screen showing the description of every computer. Finally I'm going to write a real line sentence in order to allow the user to watch what's happening on the screen. I'm going to run the project. We've got a message. This message tells us that the type serialization sample dot computer is not marked as serializable. This is one rule that we need to follow when we use classes in a serialization process. Uh, this problem is solved uh, adding a new attribute to my class. This attribute is the attribute of serializable. This serializable attribute allows this class to be serializable. Let's run again my project. And that's it. Let's take a look to the content of this file. In the documents file, we have a computer that, and I'm going to open with the notepad application. But uh, what if we need a more comprehensible format for my files? For example, XML files. We can use a SOAP formatter to create a XML representation of the object graph. For example, we have a computer's array and we can transform this computer's array in a XML representation. Let's make some changes. Instead of binary, I'm using a SOAP formatter. The reference that we need to add is system runtime serialization formatters SOAP. Now, instead of using a binary formatter, use a SOAP formatter. Everything remains the same. We only change a SOAP formatter serializer. Let's take a look at what happens when I run my project. The effect on the screen is exactly the same, but what happens with the file? The file now is called computer. That I didn't change the name of the file, but it contains information in XML format. Now let's open this file. Computers dot dot. I'm going to open again with the Notepad application, and the representation of the object is made with SOAP format.